Deep Dive Film School makes no claim of ownership of the film footage used in this episode. The film footage is owned entirely by the copyright holders. Also, we're going to spoil the hell out of this movie, so this is your warning. Welcome to Deep Dive Film School! Oh, this week we're going to get into that one scene from Ted Demi's 2001 film, Blow. Let's dive on in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, I am Adam Sherlock. And I'm Adam Pulcher. And if you like what you see slash hear, please like and subscribe. You can find us in all the spaces and places that people what? Find good media. That's right. Um, and uh, we have festivals that we do. Uh, we're in the tail end of a, a stop motion animation festival. That's correct. We do these one scenes every other week. Yep. Uh, we're going to do a uh, Forgotten Gem pretty soon yes, here. We, we got 101s. We got mm -hmm. all sorts of stuff to talk about film history in our favorite ways possible or that we can kind of come up with that seem kind of fun so if you're on for the ride please like and subscribe would love yes. you to do that on youtube spotify apple all that stuff wherever you listen to that stuff youtube is the preferred place to go though. yeah there's a lot of, a lot of little gems that you might miss visual wise yeah. uh, if you're just listening to the audio now this this yes. uh, uh this one scene that we're doing this time around and it's really funny because it just occurred to me that yesterday was Father's Day. I did. I know. And I was like, oh, damn, this is so like double perfect. whammy, man. <laughs> it um, was. But, uh, you know, obviously uh, the lovely Mr. Ray Liotta just passed away. Mm -hmm. Way too damn young. Also, Absolutely. such a bummer. Um, what a what a what a force. What a what a what a what a acting force the guy. Absolutely. Is, right? You know, and again, I think. It would be easy to go to something like Goodfellas. That's probably sure. where everyone goes to. That's his most famous role. That's kind of what he built his career on. Mm -hmm. He kind of went on to play some version of that guy, whether it's like the the dad of somebody who's getting married or you know yeah, just, just being the bully in an Adam Sandler film or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's, I think it's one of those things that when you when you've played the heavy as well as someone yeah, like he that has, good? We've done Narc before. Amazing. Performance you just show there. up with your cachet. Like you don't really have to. You your reputation precedes you for sure. So for him to play against type here, in fact, one of the things, and that's why I wanted to do this. One is, of the movies that reminded me of of somebody else playing against type in the same way. It made me think of. Um, the dad from Catch Me If You Can. Sure. And you had Christopher, Christopher Walken, Walken yep. another heavy mm -hmm. who usually plays the bad guy. Again, doing the same thing where it's like, you have the kid and the kid is crazy and going out and doing all these wild adventures and you're with him. Yeah. And then you keep going back to dad. And every time you go back to dad, it breaks your heart. Um, but also yeah. dad's there right by your side too. Oh, um, yeah, that's, if you take any away from this podcast listen to your dad's advice <laughs> maybe, maybe not all the time but you know they, there's More probably a few, there's probably some nuggets in there yeah and you know it's kind of you know i wanted to do this scene in particular because um it was opposite of what he kind of normally was cast as and he mm. does such a good job here yeah and unfortunately the scene is really more depth talking but it's really about his impact as a father and it really goes to you know i think one of the the great things about the scene is the writing and just understanding the characters enough to be able to hit that hit that part home so they do you know they kind of do this b-roll of stuff that's happened in the movie and yeah. we kind of reminisce or whatever but like it's done very eloquently and like you, we've seen this before but like i think the impact of his character is shown more here than in some 30 second clip that we could have done that Completely. was more ray Liotta. well because i think that to your point it's this didn't listen to my dad and and there's this culminating effect and i think it's interesting blow is a really interesting movie it's a great I mean, movie i love this the, movie the 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 character of george jung is such a like he's a very um uh, not I want to say unusual because we do see movies like this a lot but I think it's a, it is it can be a very challenging character to have be your quote unquote protagonist in a movie because all you're watching is this person make one awful decision after another. That but they're cool, everyone. they're charming, you're rooting for them. But yeah. even though you don't really want to be, this is like the serious you have version to, of yeah. Wolf of Wall Street, right? Yeah. Is it, Oh, that's not, yeah, to a right? degree. Right, like where it's well, just like your main protagonist is not a good person, uh, uh, by but, and large. But, I mean, for the most part, like, yeah, he does some sketchy stuff, but like, it, it's mostly drug related. Yeah. Um, he, I don't think he ever kills anyone. He's, n he's not a guy to go for a gun. Like, he's not a violent person. No, 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 and it's not that. I think it's more but that... It's just like the 
the character of a person, it, yeah. It like crafts the moral really, whatever. Well, I think it crafts really well of these people in his life that he cares about that he really hurts, yes. and his dad is one of them. All I'm right? saying is, like, you could still be a good guy and be a really good drug dealer, I guess. <laughs> sure. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, listen so, to your father's I, advice. So more of Adam <laughs> Palter's uh, ethics and ethos. I guess what, I, what I'm <laughs> trying to say is if there weren't people like George Young, um, you there wouldn't be movies like this to expend your disbelief, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, yeah, fun yeah, yeah, yeah. to go on a ride with a character that does something that you're not normally used to seeing yes. and seeing them be good at it. Yeah. And also rooting for them because generally, to your point, they're going to be the bad guy. Right. It's not Scarface. It's not yes. Scarface, but but it is. But like, it oh, is. Tony Montana, he's, I mean, he's done a few sketchy things, but like. Well, the man knows how to wear a Hawaiian shirt. But yeah, I mean, he <laughs> seems nice to his kids. <laughs> <laughs> but he doesn't at all. Uh, yeah, that's that's my Father's Day movie pick is Scarface. <laughs> no, uh, but what I was going to say is just that, like, I think that it is an interesting moment that we, we, we focused on this, you know, and this really might be one of the only comeuppances that that, that, the, that the character it's of true. George has in this that's movie. That's the thing, he keeps getting away with shit. He's clever enough to do that, And right? that prison isn't even the thing that's really his comeuppance. It's that his father is dying. He asks for a furlough, and it's his mother that turns him down. His yeah, I mean that is Rachel Griffiths, who's amazing and six boy, feet under, yes. and here is the mom. Um, yeah, like you know, this is we're, we're just to kind of give a little uh, context of this scene here. You know, this is George after years of getting away with shit, yep. um, being a drug king, king, uh, kingpin, finally gets caught. You know, he's had a mom who's turned him in, yep. a wife who's uh, gave up on him a long time ago, a, a daughter, daughter he's never met. Bar- who, he, she barely knows he exists. And that's yeah. a, that's really the, one of the sweetest parts of this movie, too. But it's just like a good drug movie. Like, Paul Rubens is in this movie. Paul Rubens like, is everyone, amazing. Like, yeah. it's just, there's a ton of fun performances, and you just see this lap of luxury or whatever. I think Catch Me, if you can, is a great comparison, but also Wolf of Wall Street. So I think both of those are, it's kind of both of those together. And then, of course, the only person that has always protected George is Ray Liotta, his dad, uh, played by, obviously, the masterful Ray Liotta. Let's talk for just a second here about the director, Ted Demi. Yeah, uh, the last nephew, movie. He died after yeah, this movie. The nephew of Jonathan Demi. Nephew. Okay, um, I thought it was his brother. Died incredibly young. He was 38. Was it drugs? Yeah, they, well, they don't know. He had a heart attack while playing basketball, and they think it was cocaine-related. Oh. But it, they, I think the jury was all, always out on exactly what it was. But here's the thing. He made several films yeah, in, in his career, but the films he made like were movies like The Ref, which I'm like, yeah, I like The Ref. The Ref, <laughs> it's a fun movie, and like, but the, the other movies of his Beautiful are things girls, like, right? uh, well, I was going with uh, Who's the Man, the thriller comedy uh, starring Yo MTV raps host Dr. Dre and Ed Lover. <laughs> yes, but I'm like, but I'm like, <laughs> dude, Blow is as far Blow is like. A real movie. Like, even yeah. the ref doesn't feel like a real movie, sure. right? It just feels like a, a vehicle for Dennis Leary, which, granted, it is. It is. It is yes. And also, he also directed No Cure for Cancer. So he's direct, he yeah. had directed some of Leary's stand up stuff. So I'm for like, sure. he okay. had spent like a decade making he movies with, voice. Yeah. with people like fucking Ed Lover, uh, you know? And then all of a sudden, he makes Blow and then he dies. And I'm like, <laughs> that sucks so much because Blow is like a great movie and you're yeah. like what else could he have done it's had a, he been around i would say top five drug movie would you put that in, in god in, i need to see the whole thing again because i just watched this scene and it it's very entertaining and, it is i know it's one of your favorites and i I'm, really like i wouldn't it. even say it's one of my favorites i just think it's a good drug movie it's just yeah. kind of like a fun ride it's also in the heyday of obviously we know that right now johnny depp is also in the news a lot yeah we're hoping for that search volume i think yeah 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 <laughs> Double whammy. Yeah. Yeah. Leota one guy, one down. guy, one guy kicked the bucket and the other guy just basically got his put his whole, on. yeah, got, put his whole life out for display. All of his dirty laundry. But <laughs> I will say that this movie exists in that moment before Johnny Depp pulled a Artex the horse from yeah, Never Ending Story. He and got, got super Tim got Burton. Sucked. 
got yeah. sucked down into the 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 pirates uh, the, of the Caribbean. Yeah, the Disney, <laughs> the sw- the swamp of sadness that is Tim Burton movies. Um, but before that, this is during that era. It was where in his cool era, though, for sure. Don, uh, 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 Donnie Brasco, yeah, like it was. You had one. like all of these movies he was doing at the time, where he was really trying different stuff, and even the wacky stuff he was doing at that time. I, I'm thinking of of something like uh, Fear and Loathing yeah. was still different enough that you were like, oh yeah, man, this guy's got chops. Before... Rango was probably not No, Rango far. would be a, was that a little, later? little bit later. But yeah, so I mean, I, I feel like that it does exist in this, in this space and time where, you know, there's this interesting bit of backstory where one of his seminal memories is of his dad going bankrupt and that his dad's trying to tell in him the move, in this yeah, flow. Mo- yeah money doesn't matter yeah. right i finally and understand what you mean i after finally understand what, years. Yeah, yeah but but that that you know him seeing his father emasculated in this way obviously was a huge driving Motivator. factor yeah, you know in, sure. in the risks he took mm-hmm. and the things he did and i think that's it's really interesting to kind of flip back the page and look at that in this in this uh, recording that he makes for him. Absolutely, and that that's really the main meat of this is just him leaving this kind of goodbye message to his dad. He's never going to see again because he's got life in prison. Um, yep. You know, his mom doesn't give a shit. Yep. Um, his kids, you know, in his mind, his kid cares. Yep. Um, but you know, Penelope Cruz, who plays his wife in this movie. She's like I said, given up on him at this point, and yeah. really, um, Fred, who, who who's his dad, is the only person he has left, and yep. and Ted Demi actually plays his lawyer in this mm-hmm. scene and leaves the room, and the scenes, you know, just him hit and record. We get like I said, the B roll of him talking about it, and you know, um, you know, he definitely this is some reflection and some regret stuff that he's doing, but it's so father son stuff too. Like we talked about Completely. Father's Day, this was a perfect scene to do for Father's Completely. Day. Completely. But you know, he just sits there at a cigarette with his hand, not really sure what to say, and he's like, you know, a lifetime ago I was three and a half feet tall and all sixty pounds and every inch your son. Like, yeah, this, like this, this yeah. beautiful poetic writing uh, of this like eulogy to his dad almost, and like. Boy, there's some there's some scenes in here like when he stands up for him, um, and that's actually the only words Leota says in the movie. But you get a decrepit in this scene, yeah, yeah in yeah, the scene. Yeah, yeah, uh, but yeah. you get a decrepit uh, Fred walking out as he's starting this into yep. the garage, yep. just hitting play and kind of listening to this. And honestly, this is just Leota just looking out the garage and just thinking, and it's so good. Well, part of it is that his, it's it's that. His son finally came around, Mm -hmm. but it's such a Pyrrhic victory because his son's in prison and he's dying. Yeah, it's like... And it's like, this is... Makes it worse. (laughs) Yeah, this is what you get for being loyal to your son, who was this drug dealer. And I think that that, like... The movie That's doesn't hard thing wear to do it, as a dad. The, the movie doesn't wear it too loudly. In fact, I personally wish that the movie would have ended like this. There is one scene after it, which is actually a fantasy dream that yeah. Depp's character has of meeting his daughter. And that felt like not tacked on. Cause obviously it's important, but, but like, I love the reality of just leaving it that like, you can't even actually say goodbye to your dad because of the life you chose to live. Great point. I, I that know? would have been great if they would have ended on just that. leave it yeah. there and be like, if you've been on this ride, now that you say that, it does seem a little t- more tacked on. Yeah, like, 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 gotta, oh, we have to resolve this. Stuff. Yeah, we got to give, we got to give uh, mm-hmm. uh, Jung a little bit of a happy ending. It's like, no, fuck it, don't give him a happy. I ending. mean, they didn't really. They didn't because it's <laughs> fake. But what I'm cinematically, it's it's, gotcha. it's real. Whereas, like, to leave it as, hey, if you've been pumping your fist in the air along with his whole yeah. adventures this whole time, end great. this is what you get, mm-hmm. right? What you get is. Your dad listening to this in the garage by himself while he's dying, and there's just there's something really poignant about that. Last That's a thing, tearjerker of a scene, though. Completely. Last thing I want to say, um, I love the the sort of winding tapestry of of Hollywood in 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 moments like this where you can say Ted Demi directed, uh, you know Ray Liotta in this amazing scene as this te- tender character and his uncle uh is the one who basically brought 
him to Hollywood, who basically brought Ray Liotta to Holly, Hollywood mm-hmm. in, in something wild. Before that, he was a soap opera guy because he has those beautiful blue eyes, mm-hmm. right? That's right. And so everybody was like, oh, he's a soap opera heartthrob guy. And then all of a sudden, he plays the psycho ex-boyfriend in something wild. And everybody was like, who the hell is this guy, <laughs> right? That's how he got Goodfellas. That's how he got everything after sure, it. Sure. And you just go, I love those little nuggets where you're just like, yeah, the, it's like, it. you know, his, his nephew's like, oh, I want this loving father figure and so i think i could use the same guy that my uncle used to a completely different value in this movie i like i, lo- I don't know i love that kind of no I, I yeah i love that kind of little inside baseball connection yeah, of, yeah, uh, of, it's fun. Uh, of people and relatives you know just i mean would nick cage be who he was if it wasn't for francis ford Coppola? Uh, yeah or uh, you, you know yeah, i mean exactly. maybe maybe yeah. um but uh no or uh, jason schwartzman sure yeah <laughs> um but you know just just a Great writing, you know. Like I said, the you know, remember when the FBI trap bent down and put George, uh, put on George's boots, and Fred said, "That's where you belong, you're, you son of a bitch, putting on George's boots." Yep, exactly. Like he had his back, you know, mm-hmm. and that's something that George obviously he's like, "Remember that, Dad? That was awesome." Like he obviously loves his dad, yeah, because he was the only one there. Even though he was not like a major part of the movie, we get sprinkles of them throughout, and this is just kind of a Leota character. You know, I went to watch this clip on YouTube. And all the comments are just like, "Thank you for posting this. This is one. This is such a forgotten scene with Leota. Like he's so good here, even though you know he's not totally in the scene. Like he's not showing his full chops that we could have done. Like in the, you know, when they're all cracked out in the kitchen and go- Goodfellas or whatever. Yeah, yeah, stir the sauce. But you know. you know, may the wind, may the wind always be at your back and the sun upon your face, and may the wings of destiny carry you aloft to dance with the stars, Sherlock." <laughs> Like and subscribe, everyone. Next Thanks, week, Walter. next week we're gonna do uh, the, my the life end, of zucchini. Yeah, ending out the festival. Uh, my life is a zucchini. Uh, there will be a bonus episode that will be a forgotten gem. But uh, that's right. Until then, uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.